Welcome to the Brain Software Podcast, episode 207, coming to you from the Hypnotic World Epicenter, Toronto, Canada. I'm Chris Thompson, and today, NLP and hypnosis trainer Mike Mandel and I are going to discuss the secrets to becoming an NLP wizard. So stay tuned. And so, dear friends, in these troubled times, I think it's vitally important that all those who can should, and those who will not, should not, at least in light of the shifting circumcision, I, I mean circumstances, of the present breach clout. I sort of lost my point here. And when one is given a breach clout as a present, it always makes me wonder, whatever happened to that old tranquility we used to know? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> we are not witches! <laughs> so let's welcome to the navel of the World <laughs> Hypnotic Epicenter, the inventor of the guinea pig laugh, <laughs> the king of the afternoon nap, <laughs> and, and the, the very Keith, Keith Richards of hypnosis. hypnosis. I'm accepting it now. Mike Mandel. Yes, Chris, I've given up fighting it. I'm going to get my blood changed. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. <laughs> All right, week. we've got a great podcast we here do. on NLP. It's following the last one we did, which was all about mastering hypnosis. Yeah. This one, I think, is a nice, even tighter, consolidated list. I like it. And before we dive into it, and before we do the three words that we're going to use yes. to sp creatively spark, I almost said spreeably, yeah. creatively spark our imagination, we're going to talk very quickly about the return of the architecture yes. of hypnosis. Go for it, and I'll give the plug that's it's coming It's like up. the return of the freaking Jedi. Yeah. We have been on a three-year uh, hiatus because uh, of, you know what, not uh, being able to teach uh, in a live classroom. Finally, the world is becoming a little bit more mm, sane. We have resumed our schedule. In the resumery. Five days. Let me do this. Okay, right? go ahead. <laughs> Five days of awesome hypnosis training in Toronto with Mike and with me, and it's going to be amazing. we got a great space. Go to our events page at MikeMandelHypnosis.com. You'll see the events page in the top navigation bar, and we'll probably put a link right to it in the show notes. Anyway, come and join us. We're going to have limited capacity. It's going to be an amazing experience. You're going to get very, very good at hypnosis within five straight days of hanging out with us. Yeah, man. We'll in there. Toronto, the Hypnotic World episode. All right. We got a great new setting. I just want to give a plug, Chris, to something called Calm Radio. I got into this a few months back. I got a subscription. I like it so much. They have no connection with me. But interestingly, for anybody doing hypnosis, this is an amazing thing. Calm Radio is an app. Now, notice I'm not talking about Calm, which is a totally different company. It's Calm Radio. And Calm Radio, not only do they have all these amazing types of music, you can even have like um, music for a doctor's or dentist's office that is calming for people coming in. Mm -hmm. But there's all kinds of nature sounds, rain, plane sounds, if you're working with fear of flying it has everything you can imagine that you could use in a hypnosis session or for napping in the afternoon. Every afternoon I do nap at 2 p.m. And you use calm I radio. put on the sound of a train and I, I mix in a downpour of rain on the window of the train behind my oh, head on the Sonos. Cool. So you told me I'm lying in the couch like Jack the freaking couch liar with the iPad. Like the, I, I blinder thing on. I don't put an iPad on my <laughs> head. I blinder. It's a little awkward. You know what I mean? The mask. One of those And masks. I lie there and I can just hear the train behind me in the rain. It's fantastic. Calm radio. It's a great, great service. You can get a free one, but I recommend do the subscription. You'll love it. Hundreds of stations, everything you can imagine. No commercials, really clear. And best of all, it's in Toronto, the Hypnotic World episode. And they did not pay us to say that. That's in fact, correct. Mike pays them. <laughs> so, And I swear by the $600 in my pocket that I was not paid. Okay, now I, I have a question <laughs> for you. How does it differ from something like Apple Music? It Instead of picking specific um, songs, in fact, I found out about Calm Radio through Apple Music. There was a station and it was called Mahler. And I like Mahler's music, especially his third symphony. I put it on. The quality was so amazing. It said, brought to you by Calm Radio. So this ah. is all radio stations. You can skip to different songs, no commercials. 
And you're not picking songs, you're picking different genres of music, genres, okay. like uh, instrumental jazz. Then you can add a bit of rain or waves or whatever. It's just brilliant. Check it out. Okay. Comedy. That's really cool. So let's go. So there you go. I, let's I didn't even know they had words. a, I know you subscribed, but I didn't know they had a free one. Yeah. So let's, here's the order of events. Here's mm. how we're going to run this very efficient and Pecker, fun yeah. podcast because then Mike are, and I are going off to lunch yeah. and we're taking a two week break from recording because yeah. of vacation-y stuff that's going on around here. So we're going to do the three think tank words. Words, which are designed to do what? They are designed to stimulate the unconscious mind to create linkages at an unconscious level with all that we previously learned. And by bringing in the brain's mapping system, find clever ways of working it into the conversation, which may be glanative or a complete waste of time. And it usually makes us laugh. There then once we do the three words, we're going to talk about all of the different ways that you can master NLP, right. which is an amazing skill set to have. Yeah. And then we'll wrap it up. Yeah. So, all right. Think tank words. Word, well, words. I said words. First one is a glow. A-G-L-O-W. Yes. Like, the lamps ah, were glow. all sitting there, all aglow in the fading light as mm. we listened to Calm Radio. All right. So a glow. What do you think of when you're glow? I think of brain cells being a glow. Yeah. I think neurons of the brain firing. lighting up. Yeah. That's a good one. We'll see where else okay. it goes. But that's, what about yeah. sense? Okay, sense. Well, we have senses. So we can sense things and we need to trust our intuition. We also need to learn to calibrate and use our freaking senses when we're doing NLP that's and any good. kind of communication. Sensing what the other person means, mm -hmm. listening for clarification, asking the right question. So our brain cells are all aglow. And the last one fits in what way? It's not airplane. It's aeroplane, the British variant. Music is my aeroplane. Isn't that a Red Hot Chili Pepper song? No idea. Something like that. Aeroplane, I suppose it's the more complex version of airplane. What does it make you think of? Well, it makes me think of your fear of flying may be founded on fact. Oh, I know what it because makes me think of. Because every day planes crash and... I go, go, go ahead. I'm done. Okay. I'm done. You're throwing in I, it, this is This is just the engineer in me, right? This yeah. Is, so airplane, aeroplane makes me think of... The way that most people explain the concept of lift on a oh, wing. Oh, here we go. The and they foil. use Bernoulli's theorem that there's an airfoil and that the air moves faster over the top than it creating does over the bottom, pressure. therefore creating a lower pressure, higher pressure on the bottom, and that creates lift. Eh. That's wrong. Amazing. In theory, that probably can contribute. It's all angle some, of attack, but it's called it? angle of attack. My yeah, dad yeah. taught. My dad has a master's degree in fluid mechanics. By the well, way, well, I so, always wondered yeah. about this because when I see fighter jets upside down, I thought, well, if how the are airfoil they is real, how are they flying? Why aren't they? This being is it. And if you ask anybody, and they go, "Oh, Bernoulli's theorem says yeah. that such and such," you go, well, "How does start start a plane fly upside down?" <laughs> and they do this. They go. <laughs> Hmm. I'm going to put Bernoulli with Niels Bohr. I'm no, Bernoulli was, didn't I think, say. I thought it was Bernoulli. Yeah, Bernoulli did not say that this is the reason. Did he, he just, defend it? Did he correct them for misusing it? No, he, that makes him a dick. Anyway, the point being, yeah. Aeroplane makes me think of when people try to over freaking complicate something. Uh, and the real reason, us, yeah. why does hypnosis work? Well, because I read these magic scripts at you. And if I yes. say these right words in just mm. this right way, no, you know what hypnosis works from? Focused attention. Or how does NLP work? We'll explain to you the basics coming up right now. But it's, right. it's not this big complicated thing where you have to learn a million things to do NLP. You just need to learn a handful of skills. Well, when I think of airplane, I change it to terraplane, T-E-R-R-A, uh -huh. which is Earth. <laughs> and Robert Johnson's brilliant song, Terraplane Blues, recorded in 1929. Well, listen to but that. But I also think of Aero Chocolate Bar with the oh, bubbles. Yeah. The and I used bubbles. to put that in the fridge when I was a kid because I like chocolate cold. I like the And I convinced arrow. Brian McDowell that the reason Aero Chocolate Bars taste great is the bubbles are full of chocolate flavored gas. <laughs> and he believed <laughs> Believed me. He freaking believed me. He might still think it to this day. I'll have to ask oh, him. Oh, that's okay. hilarious. So, how All do you right. become an NLP wizard, Chris? Well, okay. Well, we aren't talking about being an NLP practitioner or a no. master practitioner here, which are, by the way, those are the two labels that typically get thrown out. And we're not- I mean, thrown not out. Thrown, like tossed out. Bandied a, about. A, bandied about. Yeah, yeah. bandied. That's a better yeah. term. Thank you. That's People will better. typically say, I am an NLP practitioner or I am an NLP master practitioner. And notice I am not saying that that is- in any way bad. No, or I'm good. an NLP practitioner. It's just a description. And trainer. When someone takes a practitioner training, they become a practitioner. Yeah, it's just a designation yeah, based on their skill level that they demonstrate. So we're not talking about that. We're talking about just mastering just the being basics. being an average right. Joe or Jane who gets good at doing NLP. And happens and to be a yeah, wizard. Yeah, happens to become a wizard as All a right. result of that. So, so let's talk about this. The, the root of this and the sequencing is important here, Chris, because you said to me the sequencing is important here, yes. Mike. So I'm saying, yes, Chris, it is. 
In a conversation I had over lunch with Dr. John Grinder in about the year 2000 or 1999, must be 1999, I think, I uh, went to a restaurant for lunch and um, I think I paid for lunch so I could pick his brain for an hour and it was brilliant, brilliant mind. And he asked me, he said, what do you think are the four most important components of NLP or aspects of it? And I thought for a few minutes, because I didn't want to get it wrong. How many did you get it's wrong, like being Mike? on Hell's Kitchen and <laughs> Gordon Ramsay yelling, this is raw, come here, you. And I didn't want John Grinder to do that with me. So I got them all right. And the, the what do we call it? The, the Mr. CC? No, yeah, yeah. What's it called? An acronym. acronym. Oh, the acro oh. I thought anagram. Not that. The acronym is Mr. Here, I'll CC. I'll give you an acronym to remember that. Yeah, I'll give you a freaking acronym <laughs> in a minute. As the actor said to the bishop. So you got, <laughs> the acronym is MRCC, Mr. CC. And then you remember, the first is the meta model. And the meta model in NLP is an information gathering tool based on Dr. John Grinder's work as a linguist. The idea that we tend to mind read, we tend to imagine what people are saying. We, we build in this means this and all sorts of ridiculous things because we think we understand them and we often don't. And the meta model is designed to eliminate or uncover deletions, distortions, and generalizations. And generalizations. Yes. In fact, the, the basic way of understanding it is the meta model uses language to clarify language right. and puts the subject back in, in touch with what's known as the deep structure, all the unconscious stuff behind the language. So if someone says, oh, she drives me crazy. Who? That's well, deleted yeah, information, th th right? That, that's a that's a missing referential index, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah. Which so, is a form of deletion. Deletion. Right? And it's so, also but a- But she drives uh, me crazy. That's a, that, a, that's a missing perform too. lost performative. How does she drive mm -hmm. you crazy specifically? So there's different aspects you can go after. Well, she drives me crazy the way she looks at me. Okay. So now you're starting to get more specific information so you can make changes. So we won't, we won't talk this one to death, but the meta model is a great way of gathering information. We also use the clean language model, which we like. But the meta model is a way of being very precise in your language, as Melissa Tears, our dear friend, would say, very precise. Yeah, I would say the meta model. Everybody should learn just to improve communication. Everybody, because, Chris. Well, maybe not every single person. I suppose if you're too young to learn how to communicate because you're an infant, then the meta model isn't yet appropriate. But for everyone else, I think the meta model is important. People right. tend to communicate poorly. They leave out a lot of information. And if you can ask some basic questions to clarify information, you will get things accomplished in your life and in your communication. Right. That's this happens critical. all the time. That's in critical because I, I think family arguments where there's all these th people jumping in thinking they know what the person means. And they're off in a freaking tangent because they never clarified the initial point. Yes. All right, what's the next one? The so, next one is R for rapport. So remember, we had Mr. CC. CC. And CC is a nice one because we did combat conditioning. That's right, why right. that acronym is nice for us. Mr. Combat Conditioning. Yeah. So we got meta model. Rapport is the second one. Let's talk about that. Okay. So rapport is where you appear to have entered the same model of the world as the other person. In other words, you're speaking the same language. You're, you're building bridges. You're pacing and leading with the person. Mostly pacing. Pacing means you're creating this uh, link with them, a communication link. And, and look at the most obvious level. Let's say someone's talking to and they're leaning in like this mm -hmm. and you're like this that's not rapport but if, if you lean in the same way and look at them and engage them if they gesture a certain way and you ask for clarification you gesture the same way you are building massive unconscious rapport that you are similar to that person and because we all like ourselves we like people who are similar to us now you've taught this before and it might make sense to mention it again what is the john grinder ultimate rapport secret right this is amazing basically you don't have to match and mirror every single thing. You can pretend that the other person is the most fascinating and important human being you have ever met in your life and continually pretending that and pretend you're not pretending anymore. Guess what happens? The mirror neurons in your brain do the rest. You'll get a great, powerful rapport because we all love giving and receiving attention as part of the human givens. So if someone's talking and you're just offhand and you're checking your iPhone, you're not going to have rapport. But if they're telling you something and you're treating it as though it's crucially important and you're really riveted interesting, uh, finding a, a tremendous riveting interest in what they're saying, leaning and looking and nodding, they will feel that and you'll be in rapport with them. Short story, you did, you taught this yeah. and then very shortly after we happened to be one year, we were at Hypnothoughts Live in Las Vegas. Okay. 
And in a hallway conversation, I started talking to a young woman who I felt earlier like I had nothing in common with. I didn't feel like I was in rapport and I didn't really want to spend a lot of time in a conversation. She started talking to me and I did what you said. And I thought, I'm going to act as if she's the most fascinating person in the world. And I asked her a few clarifying questions about what she had said. And I discovered some interesting stuff about her history and all the things that she does. And she truly was fascinating. Well, that's it, and Chris. It totally Every, and everybody has something to offer. Permanently changed my perspective of her. And now I feel like I am in rapport. That's great. Now, how long did that take is the question. Like, it, it it literally took an instant just to take the attitude shift. Right. And then the remainder. And the just result to, to starts listen. to come out yes. of the conversation. It was such good advice. It works. It's like when you yes. say, when you say something about, um, let's say, installing a resource tapping on, okay. on the uh, six, sorry, the nine gamut. Right. Right. Yep. Is that what we call it? Triple Nine? warmer. Triple warmer. Yep. If you're tapping on the triple warmer and you're saying something, you must say it as though you believe it. That was a very just side point here. It's a good when one. you said, say it as though you believe it, I thought, oh, he really means that. Yeah, because yeah. if you say it with intention, all of a sudden it works better. Anyway, there you go. Exactly correct. Now we get to the CC and the first is calibration. Uh, Derek Bomber said, and we said this in another video, you can't see what you can't see. In other words, you can't see what you're not looking for. A lot of really clever people could be much better communicators if they just observe the other person. Right. You know, the worst thing you can do is if someone's talking to you, they're telling you something important and you know, you're looking at your watch and you're checking to see if it's going still. <laughs> you're just drifting away and acting like you're falling asleep. I mean, that's going to diss somebody. It's a terrible thing to do. But if you're calibrating you're and then you, when you calibrate, you can apologize and apologizing can be a really important thing in any friendship. So <laughs> calibrate people, always calibrate, always be calibrating. So talk about congruence. Okay. And I'm just going to remind you, we went from Mr. CC. So we've done meta model, model rapport. rapport. We've done calibration. And, and then the final C is congruence. Yes. And I'm very congruent about keeping in order. Congruence is about sending one consistent message, right? So as Mike has often taught at the front of the classroom, if we were to walk in that classroom and say, we're going to have a lot of fun here or just in this podcast. Yeah, this is going to be, this gonna be a very exciting podcast. Really exciting. <laughs> yeah. You're going to not feel the congruence because I'm not giving you one consistent message. If I say I'm looking forward to going out to dinner tonight, I should mean it. I am really looking forward to going out to yeah, dinner. Or rolling tonight. your eyes. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm really looking <laughs> oh, forward yeah, to seeing it. Oh yeah. She's smart. <laughs> He's a genius. Right. Oh. <laughs> We uh, want to be congruent in our communication. Now, when we do that, do we have to say anything else about congruent? No, I think that's I think it. We've yeah, been make sure that all that. your systems, your physiology, your to vocal tone, your words, everything are sending one consistent message. Okay, now watch how I tie this into what's coming This is going to be clever. So this Mr. CC stuff, the foundational aspect of basic human communication, it isn't actually NLP yet in terms of interventions and changing people okay. and imaginations and doing things but it's the fundamentals. So where do we go once we have Mr. CC in place? Right. We can do some NLP, although I guess the meta pattern technically is still doing some NLP. Right. Well, of course it is. Mm -hmm. Yes. It, we're making, you can use the techniques to build change in people's lives and help them maintain that change. Well, think about it for a second. If you're congruent when you interact with another human being, if you're calibrating them and you're in rapport with them and you're getting the information you need, now you can go on to change work because you... If, elicited mm -hmm. what you need to make it work. John Overdorf, brilliant NLP trainer and hypnotist, um, he talks about the meta pattern. And the meta pattern is foundational to so much NLP mm -hmm. that we actually do it all the time. Anybody doing NLP does it, but, but he's really seen the pattern behind the patterns. Meta meaning off to the side, stepping to the side, looking at it. Yeah, and like the global pattern. Yeah. In a sense. Uh, yes, I think that would probably be the case. It's a global pattern because it's found not in every NLP thing, but in a lot of them. We call it ADAC, A-D-A-C, because it's easy for our students to remember. And it, it. sounds like like ACDC, which is yeah. kind of like the shirt. But yeah, yeah, we want to be very clear. John oh, yeah, Overdurf man. created this model. He or, or discovered the model, I yeah. suppose is maybe a better way to put it. He calls it the meta pattern. That's its official name. Right. We just like giving it the acronym ADAC. Make it easy it to remember. It very easy to remember. You want so to explain it? It's associate. But now we often say activate. Mm. Activate. The dissociate. Problem state. Activate. 
collapse. Activate, dissociate, associate, collapse. We teach it in the yes. Mike Mandel Hypnosis Academy. We teach it in NLP Essentials, our NLP training as well. But very briefly, you're activating or associating into the problem state that you wish to resolve. You're dissociating by imagining it maybe out there. Out just there, as one right? example, there's many ways you can do this, but you dissociate from it. Then sometimes break state a little bit. You build up a powerful performance state. You associate into some resourceful, powerful, I am awesome performance state. And then from holding on to that, you observe that dissociated and other state. And collapse them together. And they collapse. Like, there we go. All right. Yes. That's the simplest way to and explain it. And that's it. So you're, you're in the powerful state. And you're collapsing the previous dissociated one together. And like Chris said, you can even just be looking mm -hmm. at it from the, the powerful state and that will mash it. Now, the reason we mentioned this is important is because it fits with anchoring really obvious ways. You get the anchor of the negative state. You get an anchor yes. of a really positive <laughs> Get an anchor of a really positive state and you're mashing them together. That's the collapse and it's yes. changing the brain neurologically. So anchoring is is part of ADAC in a sense, or the meta pattern. It's basically well, yeah, the meta pattern in. works with anchoring. Right. In fact, anchoring where you're you're getting the states that oppose each other, stacking positive anchors, getting mm -hmm. your negative anchor, firing them together. It's impossible for it to not change, and that's ADAC at work. Richard Bandler said anchoring. You can get anything through anchoring. In other words, it was a general uh, technique from the 70s in NLP that became very very ubiquitous because you can use it on so many things. So we recommend learn anchoring. Okay, so we probably should move to our commercial break and then we'll wrap up with three quick points yes. on things that you can add to your NLP toolbox. Okay. Tonight on the Owen Sound Network. Good morning, sir. Would you like a menu? Yeah, that would be great. How about a tea or coffee? Sure. Uh, do you have any Tim Hortons? Uh, sorry, sir. We just have bulk coffee from our supplier in Toronto. Uh, never mind then. I guess I'll just have an orange juice and uh, the big breakfast. Good choice, sir. Bacon or sausage? And how would you like the eggs? Uh, scrambled eggs with sausages and that. Don't overcook the sickening things, though. I don't want them to be bitched. Why are you looking at me like that? And that? No reason, except, well, you wanted a Tim Hortons coffee. And you said, and that. And that you didn't want the sickening thing to be bitched. It's just, I have to ask. Are you from Meaford, Ontario, sir? Uh, I'm not sure. I I might be. And that? Larry Gomez, the man who might be from Meaford, tonight at 8 p.m. on the Duder and Eddard Network. Okay, we're back. So let's wrap up with the three things that we want to talk about. Some NLP greatness. So the fast phobia oh, cure, perfect. otherwise known as the... Rewind technique. Why is that so awesome? The rewind technique, as Human Givens Theory has shown, is useful in a wide uh, range of things you can apply to, not just what it used to be, the fast phobia cure, where you could typically cure a phobia in five to 10 minutes. It will also remove the negative charge from any bad experience, a horrible argument you had with someone, um, you know, the remnants of uh, something you saw in a car crash, whatever that stays with you, you can remove that. It can be a de-traumatization strategy. De-traumatization. Right? Mm -hmm. And you're taking the event, you're dissociating from it, you're running it backwards and jumping in and it, it's, a, you're scrambling it forward. You're Backwards scrambling yeah. because you're you're doing a mix of associate and dissociate and you're also running it forwards and backwards which yeah. tends to scramble the whoa i don't know how to run this pattern anymore right like scratching a you used to say scratching like taking record. an old record and scratching and that became it. a you know a tape and mm -hmm. now it's corrupting a file <laughs> yeah taking yeah. a tape and running a magnet yeah. over it or taking your hard drive and writing and erasing all the time that think kind about of it. thing like you're, you're running it forward very small and grainy so there's no emotional charge it's dissociated mm -hmm. Then you're jumping in and running it backwards in full 3D and color. As Bandler said, it's impossible to have an emotion backwards. You're so, bulldozing the yeah. neural pathways that used to fire that old crap. And you can pattern. add circus music mm -hmm. and funny laughter and guinea pig laughter, right. or whatever. But the, it's such a great technique. The rewind technique is de rigueur for anybody learning to do good NLP. And we do teach it in our course, yes, NLP Essentials, which right. you'll find a link to on our, on our description under this video. The next thing I want to mention is... What the heck are NLP timelines and why do people want to work with them? <laughs> NLP timelines, I believe, came from Richard Bandler originally. Tad James, God bless him, he's uh, since deceased, excellent trainer. He created timeline therapy, which is a totally codified method, a trademark method, which I'm trained in, uh, which is is 
timelines on steroids. It, it goes into real, much more stuff. But basic NLP timelines are the idea that we code time geographically in space. We think of events as behind us. and We think of things in the distant future as far away. And we can interact with our perception of where events are geographically in space and change their emotional charge. We can build in new resources. We can eliminate things. We can change our memories. So it's another way that we can use NLP techniques, in this case, NLP timelines, to change how we feel about the past and how we feel about the future and how we yes. envision it and all that stuff. It's great for clearing up the past and even creating a new future. All and right. now we're saying for our final point, learn some freaking NLP new code. And what the heck is NLP new code? And does it imply there's an old code? Yeah. Well, we never say old code. We say classic, classic code NLP, code. which is the stuff involving submodalities and so on. Richard Bandler and John Grinder developed in the 1970s. And it's awesome. When they bifurcated, John Grinder began to work on new code, which is NLP that involves involves much more of the physical body. You'll see more bilateral Bringing motion. movement and yes. breathing into it and the chain of excellence. Chain of excellence. With, with breathing at the top. Amazing stuff. And new code is great. I think everybody doing NLP should be able to do both. And you take a simple thing like walking with grace and power, where you're walking, putting yourself in an empowering state, changing the way you move, changing the way you breathe. And you're putting a what we call a choice point on the ground in front of you, maybe in a, a hoop, a wooden hoop or something, or marking a spot. In yeah, the ground. we'd often use hula hoops, yeah. plastic rings. And you're, you're stepping out of that negative experience. You're leaving it there. Then you're walking up and down, getting and graceful and powerful. Then you walk through that spot without looking at it. You wind up decimating it. And then all of a sudden the problem disappears. I've actually... A cured smoking uh, problems with this once. A woman came to me for smoking cessation. We worked, I think, in a gymnasium, set up a hoop. She stood inside, all the urge to smoke, all these things, stepped out of it, left it there, walked up and down with grace and power, head felt high, strung. Now walk through the images. She did, destroyed them, walked through the sounds, walked through everything left. Now she stands in it and attempts to feel it while breathing in this powerful state. And that's testing smoking your work. Smoking problem disappears instantly. And that's testing your Check work. Your so work. walking with grace and power, we teach that inside of the NLP Essentials we do. course as well. Fantastic fantastic intervention. There's lots of interventions, but I think the key wrap up point here, if you agree with me, Mike, is that when you have the Mr. CC stuff to nail, so yeah, you've got yeah. the meta model, you know how to build with rap rapport, you know how to calibrate and deliver a congruent message. Then it's a simple matter of learning some basic skills that are related to interventions right. like how to run the walking with grace and power sure. protocol, reframing, how to do reframing, how to do timelines work, how to do walking with grace and power, how to do the fast phobia cure. I think I said walking with grace and power. Even twice. stuff like David Snyder's mm. spin. Yes. You know, take the thing out. Spinning Some modality it shifts, yeah. theater of the mind, the literal reframe, which you Dock teach of the your, Bay. all of these different NLP interventions, which you can then run. If you're a hypnotist inside of trance with a client, it gives you a toolbox that you can apply once you have that material of trance created, let's say. Exactly. So pretty yeah. straightforward stuff. Which takes us to our empowering question. All Chris. right. Here it is. What am I going to learn next? As I find ways of integrating NLP into my life and make it a part of who I am. Brilliant. And our meta five, which is one better than a metaphor, is the most famous person I ever hypnotized. It was an accident. It was the 1980s. I was performing in Ottawa, doing a show at mm. Glebe Collegiate. Nice high school, great bunch of kids, tranced out a bunch of kids on stage. And one of them, this beautiful teenage girl with big 80s hair and a wall to wall, huge smile, volunteered. She was one of the people on stage. I got her to forget her name. She couldn't remember it. She was struggling to remember it. And YTV had filmed the show and they ran it in a program. And I was given a copy of it, which then was turned into a promotional video for my clients. So back in those days, a corporation wanted to know whether to hire me or not, like Burger King USA or something. We'd send them a video cassette, a big one, and they'd watch it and would decide. Well, they watched this and it was, uh, I think it was Motorola book me. They said, oh, it was the video. When we saw who you hypnotized, we decided to hire you. I went, what? He said, you don't know? And I went, what? He said, watch the video. When did you last see it? I said, oh, I don't know, 10 years ago. It was filmed in the 80s, this in the early 90s. I watched the video. It's about 1996, I guess, when I saw the video. And the young girl who forgot her name was Alanis Morissette. 
Thanks, everybody. This has been the Brain Software episode. The Brain Software episode. The Brain Software podcast, podcast. episode 207. Yeah. Featuring Alanis Morissette. <laughs> Just kidding. That's uh, Chris Thompson. <laughs> check out the Mike Mandel Hypnosis Academy if you want to learn hypnosis. Check out NLP Essentials if you'd like to learn more about NLP. You'll find both of those on the products page of our website. Or we'll put links in the show notes in the description under this YouTube video. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, smash it, and then ring yes. the bell so you're always notified of our latest videos. And we'll see you in the next episode. Thanks again and, and good night. night.